you for being here for another edition of On Point. All the enthusiasm and great things happening in Sault Ste. Marie. My guest today, the Executive Director of the Downtown Association, Josh Ingram, is a big part of that. And we'll talk to him right after these commercial messages. discover all kinds of treasures and never pay more than five dollars inventory is restocked every saturday and you can find anything from electronics to household items toys and much much more on saturday everything is five dollars and the price goes down throughout the week ending with 25 cents on friday we restock weekly with new items from various big box stores so you never know what treasures you can find come visit us at quarter to five 2510 ashman street in sault st marie michigan have a great business idea but don't know where to start? Need help taking your business to the next level? C2C Business Services can be your guide in navigating the path of entrepreneurship. With services ranging from grant funding support, access to service experts, market information, and helping your business adopt new technologies to create and foster a culture of innovation for ongoing success. Call C2C Business Services and let them be your first step in taking your entrepreneurial dreams from concept to commerce. C2C Business Services is a division of the Sault Ste. Marie Innovation Center. Welcome back to On Point. Thank you so much for the support of this show. We got a couple of big shows coming up, the mayor and MP and the new city clerk next, and next editions of On Point and a guy that's equally responsible for the success of this community, the executive director, Josh Ingram of the Downtown Association joins me right now. Thanks for being here, Josh. Thanks for that uh, that uh, boisterous uh, introduction, Andy. No problem. I'm so excited you're here, Josh. A pleasure to be here. No problem. You're the guy that's responsible, too. You've done your part in the Downtown Association. I was wondering whether we could start with this and the background of how this year has been so fantastic. The background work, the viewers would, I'm sure, like to hear that. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the, that was that was a, a, a really nice introduction. But really, what we are is a, is a cog in the machine. What we are is a, a piece of the puzzle uh, that's generating positive buzz and really trying to transform downtown. So our board, our volunteers, our members uh, are all kind of. I keep using all these different analogies, but paddling a boat, you know, and I feel like um, finally after a few years we have the municipality and we have, you know, some provincial support, our membership, future SSM, and I feel like we're all finally paddling in the right direction all together. Uh, we're on the same page, we're communicating on an active basis on so many different initiatives that you're really starting to see us kind of tick off some boxes because we're all really working together. Right, and the mayor will be on the next edition of On Point, and I would tell him that my father told me a long time ago, when preparation meets opportunity, it equals success. And I think you guys have all done that very well. Oh, well said. Your, your father sounds like a, a very astute <laughs> man, yeah, for sure. And um, when I think of the downtown, you've done your job, Josh, here's why. When I think of the downtown association, I think of the street parties. Mm -hmm. And um, how have they gone this year? Were you satisfied with uh, what's been happening? We had, we had phenomenal weather this year for the street parties. Uh, we had some new initiatives that we tried, like uh, the community art project. Uh, we had po block parties for each one of those murals that was completed. That was a fun new 
new piece of programming. Another exceptional piece of programming was our uh, first annual poutine feast that happened over right. Canada Day. And you know, uh, unofficially, I've I've been told from uh, different individuals that we believe that we hosted Sault Ste. Marie's largest food festival, which is a which is a great accomplishment, and it's wonderful that it came from my office. It's wonderful uh, all of the help that we got from the CSD offices right. and from our counselors, and and it was it was a real success. Um, we're very proud to do it. And the other thing that we're really proud of is is the partnerships that we made for that event. For example, we hosted it in the Heritage Square parking lot uh, with the Ermatinger Clerk National Historic Site. They said that they had record numbers coming through. Uh, for the Canada Day, we had a shuttle going back and forth between the canal with the uh, the paddlers who paddle down the canal, as well as to the Roberta Bondar site that had all of the Canada Day celebrations going on as well. And those buses, those those charter buses or service buses, were all 70% to 100% full every single time it dropped off and picked up. So we made this little run of right. downtown events going on, and people People say there's nothing to do downtown. Well, there were three things, four things to do downtown that day, and people were going back and forth to these different sites. We were also one of the stops for the Hub Trail tour that they do every year. Mm -hmm. um, so there were multiple, multiple, multiple things to do, and people came out in droves. One of the things that we learned from that event is that. Um, People get wary of, uh, you know, we're, we're such, uh, we're people in the north, we go cottage country. We, we take off on Friday, we come home late Sunday, and maybe you can't activate your downtown. Well, that event ran fr uh, Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And I'll tell you what, um, for just as many people who go to cottage, which there's nothing wrong with getting on your, you know, a paddleboard or your kayak out of cottage and doing a barbecue, but for as many people that do that, there are just as many people who stay inside of our community to the point where we actually ended up running out of some of our beverages and some of our food options on Friday night at Poutine Feast. It was wow. right around the time we were about to close down. I think I think Friday we closed at nine, and and at like eight thirty we had reports being like we're out, we're we're kind of out. So it would have to they would close down. A truck and go to another one or you couldn't get a beer necessarily and so we doubled our efforts the next day and the day after wonderful talk to me about the counselors in war two which is the downtown area i'm going to single out one a counselor lisa vizzo allen i knew she would be a fantastic counselor even before she got elected how important have the counselors been to the success of the downtown uh, you know, tremendously. Uh, we're a board of council that, through the Municipal Act, requires a councillor sitting around our table. Right. That's something that had been neglected when I first got my job. Uh, Mr. Romano at the time was a councillor and he was sitting as chair of my board. And, and part of the impetus for him joining that board is because he realized through stipulation that there needed to be a councillor on the, the on the Downtown Association Board of Directors. Wow. So we have such an active councillor, the, the most active councillor I have seen since I, I have had my position. We communicate, uh, you know, via message messenger via phone uh, every few days and you want to talk about somebody who who is so intelligent she has been in the non-for-profit world her whole uh, career so she really understands uh, what it's like to work with um, boards who are volunteer uh, subcommittees who are volunteer but past that uh, the communication and the the ally uh, ship is so strong uh, with Councillor Vezuan but on top of that She's volunteered to move tables and set up tents throughout the day as well. So uh, this is this is an individual who is so dynamic and is so oh. helpful to our board. <laughs> totally, we couldn't be more grateful to have her. And she is also led by example. By um, uh, later this year, a store will open on Gore Street. Uh, she's led by example to something that will make the downtown even more dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. Being being socially minded, being uh, you know fiscally minded, being kind of strategically minded, uh, you know, and then putting grunt work in. Uh, we can't we can't say more good things about her, and we're so happy to have her on our. Well, board I'm sure. glad you brought that out, Josh. Something I didn't even know that there always wasn't a counselor on the downtown board. Yeah, it kind of it kind of went through uh, this kind of state of uh, uh, hibernation almost in regards to what was needed and what wasn't needed. The association has been around since 1976. It's actually one of the oldest business improvement areas in Ontario. Uh, I think it was within the first five that were formed. So it's, it's, it's really important that when we run these boards of councils, especially ones that are um, funded via levy, there's not very many of those like that. Um, 
you know, in regards to a municipal uh, like hierarchy, that that we're really responsible to um, first the municipal act, to our clerk's office, and then to the right. internal policy that the the board of directors has approved. We need to be making sure that as much as we have really good street parties, that we're also responsible um, to our membership and to our levy. Is there something that you want to try out that you haven't tried out for the downtown association? <laughs> you may go with it in 2020. Well, that, you know, Andy, that's a really interesting question because we were actually winding down um, our strategic plan that ran from 2017 to 2020. So uh, on Wednesday night's board meeting, we're going to be a approving a process to start or reignite or reevaluate <laughs> our strategic plan, see what's kind of crossed the finish line, uh, see what's you know dormant, see what's halfway through. Uh, a few things that we're launching in just a few days, we have a partnership program launching with the association uh, very, very soon in regards to you know, extending our tendrils, seeing, uh, engaging community <laughs> interest and business interest in regards to to um, some sort of uh, expansion project. The other thing that I can't really talk about right now that I am so excited about is we have uh, an application that will be launching sometime late 2019, 2020 with the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. Uh, and it's uh, self-guided walking tours as well as this amazing photo filter feature um, that will give you the opportunity to kind of guide uh, your hand on the app, you click this little slider and you can see the oldest photo in Sault Ste. Marie's archive and a, and a photo that was taken just this year. I've probably already said too much, but those are two things that we're uh, extremely excited about. Wow. You know, there's the excitement never stops with you, Josh. It's How are the new businesses doing um, that have come to the downtown and opened up? You know, Andy, it's it's kind of hard to talk about uh, every business and how they're doing because we have so many different sectors. I, I don't mean to schluff the the question off, but I, but I I will say that our vacancy rate was uh, hovering around mid seventeen percent when I first got my job, and that's about cut in half, which is great news. Um, storefronts, uh, by and large, are taken up, which is great news. And I was just talking to some of our business owners. Um, recently uh, you know over the last 10 days and they were saying that there's more f f like foot on the ground activity that they've seen this summer than they feel like they've seen in years past so I think those are all indicators of uh, a, a community becoming stronger and a downtown becoming stronger Wow that's just uh, tremendous Josh stay right there we'll take a quick uh, commercial breaks and we'll be right back after these messages Housing a 15,000 square foot custom manufacturing facility built to produce world-class cabinetry at surprisingly affordable prices. Great Lakes Fine Cabinetry brings your project from initial concept to final design. Proudly providing Northern Michigan and the Yagoma region with quality hand-built cabinetry for the past 20 years. Located at 844 East Three Mile Road, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, Great Lakes Fine Cabinetry, making your cabinetry dreams come true.
Welcome back to On Point. I'm Andy Martins. Thank you for being with us. As mentioned uh, on the show, next, next couple of editions, the mayor and the MP are coming up, and Rachel Jasinski, the city clerk. And on the show right now, we have a guy that's an important part of this team, Josh Ingram, the uh, executive director of the Downtown Association. Josh, thanks uh, for sticking with us here. Uh, let's continue the show. Um, the Street Plaza plaza on the bottom of Spring Street. I was uh, talking to a couple counselors on my uh, <clears throat> Counselor's Corner podcast yesterday and that needs to happen. How important is that to the downtown association, downtown as such? Sure. You know, um, we, you, you've all heard us reference Roger Brooks' study, uh, the study that Mr. Vare, uh, the deputy CEO, has been working on. Right. The, the uh, Our Downtown Study, our strategic plan, the Chamber of Commerce plan. We've all identified this connectivity between Bay Street and Queen Street as vital, especially while we're doing our resurfacing and our reconstruction on Bay Street. So it's it's 110% vital. Uh, it's been a, a, a process that has been two or three years in the making, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I think that it is is building those urban parks and urban centers, especially in our downtown core. Our downtown is the litmus test of how strong our community is. And to make that location uh, vibrant and to make people want to come down and invest their time and invest uh, in being part of the community down there is paramount. We've seen examples of this be so successful. Poutine Feast was successful. Jurassic Park, when the Raptors were playing, was successful. I saw the coverage that on TV did. You know, we see community come out in droves. I mean, we've gone from hundreds of people coming to three downtown events to thousands of people coming to 33 events. Um, Great. It's a necessity. And we're not going to bring you, you hear people talk about the good old days of downtown when you used to cruise. The culture is different. Not as many people have cars. I, I have multiple cousins and my niece they don't have vehicles they don't have driver's license that's not what's going to drive people downtown anymore it's it's kind of new activities and new ventures and and this plaza with some state-of-the-art equipment with uh, winter and summer features I am so done with boarding up my windows when it's winter Mm -hmm. It's time to activate downtown. It's time to say we're a community. Let's do what Toronto does and let's put some space heaters up and let's have an event or let's go skiing or let's go skating down at the skating trail that was uh, you know, by the Civic Center. That was such a huge success last year, the, the skating trail. It's, it's really time to look at people's thirsts and, and as a community finding ways to make them become neighbors again in a new way in 2020 as opposed to how we used to do it. Yeah, exactly. And you you took the words right out of my mouth. I have it written right here that, uh, you know, the street plaza in the winter will, uh, you know, we could have plaza parties and make it a real great time in the winter months. Yeah, ab absolutely. We, we, Future SSM and our events committee has been working very, very hard at finding a way to kind of take our event season and open up those shoulders a little bit right. more. And I'm telling you, I was at the, uh, we, the our events committee meeting was hosted at the Ermitinger Clerk. Kathy had us down there. She's part of that committee. And we just looked at the 2020 calendar. It is September and we have set our first draft of our 2020 calendar and it includes events staples like Moonlight Magic as well as events that we have never done before and have never done in that part of the season and I Wonderful. am so excited and so looking forward to it. It seems like we work on that a little bit earlier every month. What's really cool about this is we have such great connectivity with Future SSM and what they're planning. Um, uh, I'm the chair of the downtown development team for Future SSM so that makes it easy. As well as our, our our neighbors over the Downtown Development Authority. In the last few months, the Michigan uh, Downtown Association and ourselves have been meeting once a month to get things off the ground, including some joint social media pages, as well as just some joint calendars that can be distributed to the different businesses on both sides of the border. So uh, really looking forward to uh, making better partnership with them too. They can come over here for you know one of our events and, and there's no shame in us going over and enjoying you know something over there exactly. as well. Exactly. Before we leave this topic, Josh, can you give our viewers a little timeline on the street plaza as you know it today? 
Um, we hope to get going as soon as possible, uh, Andy. And I hate to tell you that, but that that I think in my in my length of authority uh, mm -hmm. on the subject is as much as I can say. What I would love to see is I would love to see us working on it. Uh, you know, as soon as Bay Street's done. But uh, but I think it's paramount. I think we need to take a look at some of uh, the funding where the funding's coming from. But I I think it's fair to say that the city sees this also as a, as soon as possible kind of job. Well, that's great. And I know the mayor wants to get it done, too. And it's great that Bay Street is being done now. It just makes sense to have them in tandem like that. Mm -hmm. Is there any plans for the downtown businesses and the downtown association to attract businesses to the downtown rather than moving to up uh, to Great Northern Road as we've seen in the last 10 years? Um, we don't specifically have a strategy for where in the community, but I can tell oh, okay. you that something that we just recently launched um, in the last few weeks is an initiative, a uh, provincial initiative called Digital Main Street. What it is, it's uh, it's a grant available to BIAs as well as individual businesses right. in an effort to make their sales um, a little less bricks and mortar and a little more bricks and clicks. So the association has a digital service squad member that's going from business to business and is setting up Google professional pages as well as 360 degree tours of their businesses for a better kind of interactive online experience that'll hopefully get more people through their doors. In addition, that service squad member is going through um, a digital assessment to see where the competencies of these businesses are. Um, from there, the businesses have have these wonderful, wonderful built tutorials that they can take about two hours worth of content, as well as the ability to sign up for a $2,500 grant that can be is very, very agile. It can really be put into a social media marketing campaign, a new website, uh, e-commerce, things along those lines. Um, and it's it's a very, very accessible grant. So that uh, that's something that we've recently launched in an effort to drive traffic downtown. Uh, and it's only available to downtown businesses. So that's an incentive to be downtown. It's an in incentive uh, uh, to shop downtown and hopefully have a, a better online presence. Um, long way around, I've plugged my thing, but no, we don't have a specific strategy for different locations in the community. But in the remaining minutes of the show, you mentioned people have raided the downtown here uh, like three years ago, and they've come back now, and they've really noticed the improvement on how Sault Ste. Marie is moving forward forward. Do you know the, the best compliment in the last few months that I've received is um, Kay Matthews. She's the executive director of the Ontario Business Improvement Area Association in which I'm, I'm, I'm a board member also. Um, she was here for the launch of our Digital Main Street uh, campaign in uh, late July. And uh, what she said is you can really see in the last three years, you can really see the development of the sense of place. You know, you can see that it's a, a place now and not just a street. You can see the Queenstown Commons being built up and, and right. more flower boxes and you know uh, uh, some of the streetscaping that we do and the murals. Like if you put them all together you can really see these grassroots uh, efforts tied with these large campaigns which is uh, really rewarding to hear and I and I hope that uh, you know the community sees that going from patio to pa patio and visiting your museums and, and becoming neighbors with these people people. Um, I, I really hope that that's something that's translating to our community as well as our tourists. And we really have to have this kind of thing to attract people because people don't come to this community just because. Uh, yeah, yes and no. I think I think that's uh, true, but I think that's also changing. Uh, and I think that you'll you know we have an uptick on our cruise ships. We have ten more cruise ships this year than we we did last year. Uh, for Moonlight Magic this year, we're going to be doing billboards in the UP. Uh, so we'll be able to gauge a little bit of that. Um, we have this new app Ready? launching uh, that'll actually send push notifications to people who've downloaded the app in Ontario for our events. Um, I know that uh, Sioux Tourism and, and the, the, the new election of, uh, of Jennifer to her position as, as the director um, have uh, big things planned. And you know, it's all within a year where we're trying to mitigate some very interesting uh, uh, funding challenges uh, from the, the larger picture. So I think that even with kind of, uh, you know, the times are changing, we still have boots on the ground and we're working as hard as we can. So. Um, 
I think we're trying to pitch that. You know, crank the shield, uh, our patios. There are there are different initiatives that are that are making those efforts to change Sault Ste. Marie uh, into um, that kind of community that you want to visit. And yeah, the final comments on this. I think that. Um Always advertising in the UP or in Michigan is important, and I'm really glad to see that that's being taken, uh, undertaken at this point. Yeah, uh, I, I think that this year is a great year to start um, with our advertising from our from our large scale events, from some uh, grants, um, as well as these kind of again I use the word grassroots because I think that's what BIAs are great at. We're kind of pirates, um, but this grassroots uh, work with the uh, Downtown Development Authority and Justin and Lindsay over there are are great allies, and and we want to build a community. Um, that stretches across the bridge again. Wonderful, Josh. Thanks so much for being on the show. A lot to talk about and continued great uh, uh, work in, into the remaining months of 2019 and into 2020. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. All right. On. We'll be back to wrap up the show right after these messages. Imagine knowing about incidents closures, and road work, all before starting your trip. Ontario 511 lets you know before you go. You can get real-time information directly from the Ministry of Transportation. Because the more you know, the easier it is for you to go. And spend the time doing the things that matter most. mother and I am a sister. I'm a father. A wife, a daughter. I'm Somali lady. I can very proudly say that I'm a teacher. A social worker. I'm a human being. I have a dream to be free. And I wish we live in the world full of peace. Adoptions create families. Are you thinking of adopting a child from an orphanage or your family in India, Bangladesh, Jamaica, Guyana, or any other country? Let Worldview Adoption, a government-licensed agency with 15 years of experience, help. Parmjeet Mongat and Associates are experienced in handling all adoptions cases, especially relative adoptions with complex immigration issues. For a relative or orphan adoption, domestic or international, call Worldview Adoption for a consultation today. Welcome back to On Point. I'm Andy Martin. Uh, thanks uh, to Josh Ingram again, the Executive Director of the Downtown Association, for being on the show. Upcoming editions of On Point, uh, the Mayor of Sault Ste. Marie and our MP, who will be a candidate after the red is dropped from the election in the next few days, will be on. Uh, and then uh, the, after that will be the new City Clerk of Sault Ste. Marie, uh, Rachel Jasinski. And looking forward in down the road a little bit. Uh, Andrea Reef, the inventor and the founder of Positive Sue. I call her the Positive Princess. All positive things on this show. Thank you for watching. I'm Andy Martins. We'll see you next time on On Point.